Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a slightly delayed uh, Gaur's Guide to Time Gates and Combat, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, I had a little bit of combat this morning uh, with my internet service provider, uh, but I think I rolled a, a nat 1, I think, at the start of the morning. <sighs> good times, good times, good times. But uh, I think we've got everything uh, going good right now. If not, let me know, and I'm sure, so sure somebody will let me know uh, if we have an issue. All right, I'm seeing chat light up, so we have people here. Thank you for waiting, everyone. I appreciate it. We are going to do uh, our full, as I'm getting all the all the pictures in the right places, uh, we are going to do the full two hours, um, so we're not going to be out of here. Jay is on the CNE Games account. Pulling your questions from chat. Again, today's topics are time gates and combat. Now, I will say, uh, under combat, what we're specifically going to be talking about are uh, roles and their role in idle champions. <laughs> uh, buffs versus debuffs. Uh, and then the constant uh, battle between base DPS, average DPS, and your base ultimate damage. Because those are things that seem to be uh like we did formation we did a formation uh, strategy guide and and those kind of things didn't we didn't really go into as much detail about that and i think it's good to get that especially uh, in combination with time gates because those things are going to help you do real well in your time gates so let us dive in First, because it is a time gate weekend, we have a, a what's called a natural time gate weekend. We'll get into that uh, this weekend, and we get another one next weekend. We're going to talk time gates. So, what are uh, time gates? In general, uh, time gates are ways for us to uh, kind of hand wave, go back in time, and gain access to champions uh, and their gear from past events. Because events are, uh, you know, how we. Uh, get champions added to the game for the most part in idle champions uh, we'll be doing a gar wars guide to that in the future uh, so stay tuned for that one that is uh, a big deal that's kind of what i started making guides for so it will be fun to finally touch on that topic um, but time gates are a way that uh, if we go up here to this little button uh, they're a way that uh, the game kind of hand waves and gives us some lore uh, with this character uh, for us to open up a portal to another time and uh, go back and grab like that one champion uh, that we really want or get some more gear for them. Uh, so we're going to talk about this. Um, wh why did they add this? I mean, this wasn't in the game from the beginning. And again, it was it was one of those things after a while. I mean, when we first started playing the game, it was just events. Uh, but you would grab your, your champion out of an event and then there was no way in the game to even get better gear for them. I remember getting Stokey from the very first year one High Harvest Tide event. Uh, and my gear didn't quite end up as good as my friend's gear and I was jealous forever because he got the gold find stuff that just made his favor skyrocket and I did not. I got like the debuff stuff which helped me push but didn't wasn't it wasn't as big of a deal because, uh, you know, gold is king. Um, and eventually they added time gates because they were like, look, we have to be able to deliver uh, deliver more gear to people, but also if you started the game late, go back and grab champions. Um, now, we'll go over how all this interface works. I'm going to hop into one of these here in a moment. Um, how do you access it? Well, that button is one. Right? Like, if you're in an adventure, uh, you can look at your time gates via the arch here. Uh, it's got a little G in there for gate. Uh, and you get to this screen. Uh, the other way is, yeah, and we're going to do this the full way, is when you complete your adventure, because this is how you're going to actually be able to get into one. When you complete your adventure, uh, you're going to come over here to time gates. Uh, it's right there on the left side, always at the bottom. Uh, and you're going to get this, again, this same pop-up. Now... Mine does say no gate currently open. That's because I, I did actually do my natural time gate uh, last night. Um, however, let me see here. Let me load up my other account in the background. Um, so this is a situation where uh, we would be looking at if there wasn't uh, a time gate weekend. It would say no gate currently open. Time gate pieces can be used to open a time gate now. Your time gate pieces are up here on the left. I have a lot 
you need six pieces, and we like to call it the pizza, uh, six pizza slices uh, to grab, uh, to open a time gate. Um, so once you have them, uh, you can just hit this button and see what's going on. But how do you get time gate pieces? Obviously, the first most frequently asked question uh, about uh, time gates in general. Time gate pieces, uh, in their most basic uh, drop form uh, and accessible form, uh, basically just come off of a boss kill. Um, however, once you get one, it sets a timer like a cooldown until one's going to drop again, and it's not going to drop for another five to six days. Um, we we give a, there's always a little leeway there because it's not a, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you're going to get one the second that timer's up. Uh, you know there is a little bit of RNG involved, but not a whole lot. You, know, you tend to get it pretty much like clockwork. Um, so you you gather one roughly every week or so, a little less than a week. Um, you can also get them once you unlock the patrons. Uh, which we can't hop into a store right now, but you there in the patron shop, which I'll show you in a bit, you can go in and the very first uh, influence unlockable item is a time gate piece. You can buy one piece per patron uh, every week. Um, and then also sometimes wild offers uh, and things in the shop will have time gate pieces associated with them. Sometimes there are many events like uh, we just had the anniversary celebration here in Idol Champions for their three year anniversary. Um, and sometimes the rewards that they have in those chests are time gate pieces uh, as a way to kind of uh, give you the ability to go and get another champion or more gear. Um, now, if we look over real quick, let me hop over to... Nope, 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 that doesn't like that at all. Hmm. Hmm. I think my game grabbed the wrong page. Hold on. Let me try to force it. Find a new one. Hey, there we go. All right. Oh, internet. Why do you plague me so? Okay. So, uh, if we look over here on my other account, and I open up the TimeGate window, you'll see, hey, free TimeGate weekend. Choose one of the three free TimeGates to open. So this is what you're going to see this weekend and next weekend. Uh, free TimeGate weekends happen. Uh, usually... Usually the schedule's pretty set. This year things have been a little odd. 2020, what are you going to do? Um, but whenever they have a content week, so like this week we had uh, more Baldur's Gate Descent into Avernus content released, uh, that Friday will be a natural time gate weekend. Next week, uh, for those of you watching this live, next week uh, will be, uh, uh, hopefully, Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frostmaiden, a new campaign, and we will have on that Friday... A natural time gate weekend. So you can see up here we're being told with Meister's guidance I've prepped three time gates to past events. Select which gate to go through and I can keep it open for a short period of time. Uh, that period of time, once you open it, is 72 hours. Choose wisely, my power is only enough to open one on my own. And when once this triggers on a Friday at noon, you have 72 hours to access the gate, to open it, and then you have 72 hours to do it from the point that you opened it. Um, so as it says, other time gates may still be open with time gate pieces, right? But this is just a free weekend. So it's going to denote here, free, because you didn't pay anything. Um, it's going to give, there's a lot of information here. Uh, so we'll go over this uh, piece by piece. Um, so first off, uh, we have ways to filter what's showing up. However, on a free time gate weekend, you are only going to ha be able to choose between these three champions that they give you at the top. Um, the community refers to each of these three slots as a bucket, because there's a bucket of champions that you can get from each of those. Um, so in one of the buckets now, uh, there will be a year one champion, uh, because events now are going to have, well, they have for the last, for last year and this year, you, there will only be three champions available in event. So since we're now into year four, that means those year one champions are getting bumped out and now have become, for lack of a better term, time gate champions. So you will only be able to get those year one event champions out of time gates. So we see our friend Narak here, uh, and we can grab him uh, out of out of one bucket. Uh, the other two buckets are going to be made grouped up of all the rest of those champions. There will always be, whether it's a year one champion or one of the other two options, there will always be one champion in a time gate. 
that you do not own. So at least one champion will show up here. In this case, uh, I don't own any of these. So I, in this account, I don't have a lot of champions. So I get three champion options that I don't own. But there will come a time when maybe there's you will only have one. And the other two will be champions you own, but maybe you need better gear for. Uh, and eventually when you own all the champions, it's just going to be a random selection from the three. Um, so... We see three free champions. They're denoted with free. If we choose them, uh, we're going to get uh, another pop-up here that's going to confirm, are you sure? Because you only get to open one for free. You are locked into this choice once you make it. Um, we're going to cancel here. Um, we will note here, though, it does say level requirements. First adventure area 50, second adventure area 75. What does that mean? Well, note it also, it also those numbers look strikingly familiar, right? These little, this little box here is communicating that information to you. That this is, this is first adventure, second adventure, these are area requirements. What it's doing is telling you that to get the rewards from this time gate, you're going to need to beat area 50 on one adventure and area 75 on another. Uh, inside a time gate, we'll see in a moment, there is also a random event uh, variant specifically for for this for this champion we'll go into why that is here in a moment um so that's not listed because that's going to be because it's random it could be one of three from an event uh we they, the game gate doesn't know what that's gonna what that's gonna tell us yet it's kind of hiding some of that information so there's a bit of randomness to this but you are guaranteed uh these two missions at these levels when you after you've done this you'll note down here i've got i've got crawl and he's a lot higher why is he different? Uh, well, when you do a time gate, after we select one of these three, uh, these numbers are going to change. They're going to go up by 50 levels. So as you see, I've obviously done a time gate for Crawl before, and it bumped up the area requirements to 100 and 125. Now, if, if Crawl was showing up up here as one of these options, and I didn't pick him, what would happen is, like, say, I pick Narak, which is what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I've pick Narak. Narax is going to go up for next time to 100 to 125. Crawls would then drop. It's it's going to drop anyway because he's not being selected here. It will drop by 25 to each of these. So he's going to go down to 75 and 100. Um, what they're doing here is they're encouraging you to, this is kind of their way of encouraging you to pick up different champions. Um, and also don't just focus in on one and do it over and over and over again because it's going to get harder to re the, meet those requirements. Uh, it's going to harder to get you the rewards from the time gate. Um, and you really, in general, it's good to spread out gear evenly. Uh, you know, unless you're hunting for one specific thing, uh, for one specific champion, right? Uh, but you can still do that in a rotation. Uh, the ideal rotation is a three champion rotation. If there's three that you know you want gear for, um, you just do one, and then the next, and then the next, and by the time you come back around to that first one, it's back down to the to the regular requirements again. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, we'll get into the filters uh, here in a bit on the other account, uh, because we're going to do a manual one over there. But here we have to choose between one of these three, right? Make sure I've got everything here. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so we're going to pick Narak. Now, why am I going to... How do you make your decision here, right? I mean, it's it's really going to be kind of up to you uh, and what you need. Um, a lot of people make their decisions based off who's going to offer them the most power. Um, some will choose, like, who's now with uh, Multiparty and Modron. Who's going to get them uh, somebody in a slot that they don't have so that they can have meet that requirement of uh, at least two champions in each slot uh, to be able to... to unlock split the party um, in this case uh, I already have a swap uh, here I already have a swap here uh, I know enough about the game uh, to know that in liars night which is going to be the next event I'm gonna get a swap in this slot so I don't necessarily have to pick up Crydal right now because pretty soon uh, I'm gonna be able to pick up someone else in his slot um, I also know that uh, these three, out of these three champions, none of them are really going to be taking over in the slot that they would be going in. Celeste here is my healer. Uh, it's still a, a newer account. I don't necessarily want to lose my healer in my formation. 
Um, this account already has Delon and Hitch, both with really good gear. All blues here, and four blues and two purples here, and so I've been using Hitch. Um, so Narak, who's, who's only going to get a chance to get a little bit of gear here, isn't necessarily going to become somebody that's automatically going to get used here. And the same over here. I've got full blues here. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've got a green here, but Farida does pretty well over here as well. Picking up a couple pieces of gear on Jim out of this time gate isn't necessarily going to put me uh, to using Jim. So I know enough about these three champions to know that Narak is actually usable without gear, while the other two really need gear. So I am going to pick Narak out of this. This is how you kind of have to think through your decision making. Uh, keep in mind all those variables. If you don't unnecessarily understand all those variables, ask. Ask in the community. Ask on Reddit. Make a post on Reddit. There's a time gate discussion thread. Um, you can ask in the Discord. Uh, there's a hashtag uh, time gate channel. Uh, these places exist specifically so that you can ask these questions and have people uh, help you do the thought process. Most people are just going to give you give you make you choose one or the other but when you have a lot of variables like this make sure you list out that information so that they can help you uh, kind of think through and make an informed decision right so we're gonna choose Narak here uh, I'm gonna hit open this is gonna lock this time gate in won't be able to change change my choice after this okay keep that in mind boom so now we have a new screen the time gate is successfully opened don't forget your time is limited so use it wisely you can see the time gate down here we do now have 72 hours, right? Gate closes. You can't close it early. Uh, you only do this once you've once you've finished all of these these things and earned your rewards. Um, when you open a time gate, we haven't talked about this stuff up in the corner. When you do open a time gate, that does trigger the addition uh, of that champion's chest to the store. Uh, so if you also uh, like to support the game uh, via cash. You can click here, it will take you to the store, and you will then be able to buy chests and things for, for that champion, because they're not necessarily always available. So let's look at what we get out of doing this time gate. Again, this is a time gate for a champion I don't own. So right away, we see the complete area 50 and complete area 75 that we talked about. We see whispers over here. This is that variant we were talking about. We'll get into that in a second. The very first thing you get out of a reward, once you complete area 50 on this very first run, is you're going to get an Iraq obviously and you're going to get one gold chest for him this is guaranteed gold the second one this is another gold chest for completing area 75 after you've already done this one uh, and then uh, we're going to be able to do this variant now again it could have been one of three variants and those we get we got the easy one complete area 75 and it tells you what's what the, the restrictions are on that variant uh, lots of stuff Lots of rules, just like in an event. It is literally one of those event, the three event variants you do when when the event came around. Um, the requirement here could be either complete area 75 for the first variant, 125 for the second, or 175 for the third. Keep that in mind because you're just like with an event, you're starting this time gate off with no favor. Right up here, no favor, which means no gold bonus, which means you're going to have to to grind up some favor to be able to push. And if this says 175, you're going to need a lot. Now, the good thing about it is these don't require tokens like in an event. So you can do these. You can run a bunch of free plays without having to worry about, you know, tokens or anything. They're just free over and over and over again. And then you can build up the favor to do the variant if it's a higher requirement. Okay, now I do have to exit out of here because as you'll notice, I can't, I can't play any of these. Why not? Well, it's because I opened this while I was in an, an adventure. Right? We can't we can't run two at once. We, I don't have multi-party open yet on this account. This is not a... I haven't unlocked it. So, I can't run that time gate. So I do have to exit out of here. And go back to the main screen. And open it up from here. Now when I do, it, it is going to be blue. I am going to be able to access this. And we hop in and start that grind. Again, this is this is like anything else. There's no bonuses going on. I've got nothing. Uh, nothing but my trusty mage hand uh, and tutorial dwarf over here, or Brunor. Alright, so that's gonna that's gonna take off here. We'll hop back over to my other account. Uh, because we're not gonna be able to see a whole lot going on on that one for a while, are we folks? 
<laughs> it's going to be trudging along just like at the, the beginning of the event. That may take an, an hour or more with active management. Who knows? Maybe half an hour just to get to that goal. Um, I will want to push uh, not just not just hit 50 and then and finish 50 and then leave because I, I need some favor to be able to get to 75 on the next run. I'm, you know, I'm going to want to push to like 55, 60, 65, whatever on a newer account you can push to. Uh, on more experienced accounts, you can push way past that, right, on your first run. Um, I just, I would recommend if you have lots of power not to necessarily go as far as you potentially can, because you do still have another mission that you can do, uh, and you just need to finish that variant. Um, so as long as you're doing those requirements, that's great. Pushing deep, though, does have two bonuses. Uh, one, first off, we did say we're getting gear here, and all we saw there were three gold chests, right? Well, time gates are also unique in that they can offer you silver chests as well. Uh, the way that you get your silver chests out of time gate is that every time you get to a 100 level milestone, so at 100, at 200, at 300, uh, the first time you reach those, kind of like a, hitting an achievement point, you get a silver chest for that champion. Uh, so if you're newer and you can only get to 100 easily, uh, you know, maybe you beat 175, but that was rough, and you just don't think you can hit 200. Um, you know, 175 for a variant, and you don't think you can hit 200. You can grab one silver chest off a level 100. But if you think you can easily manage to go to 300, go ahead and push, earn the favor, and get up to, to that level. Grab your three silver chests by getting to 300, and then you can... You know, if you've already grabbed all those gold chests, you can then close the, the gate early. You don't need to leave it open. You don't necessarily need to push for favor. You can, because just like within an event, uh, the amount of favor that you earn in a time gate can be converted back into a campaign uh, a campaign of your choice. Uh, it, it converts as a multiplier, so, you know, whatever whatever factor you get that you can multiply against your main campaign is, is what it will do. However, keep in mind... Uh, in an event, whereas normally you get, uh, for every E01, we do this in scientific notation, for every E01 amount of favor that you get in an event, uh, it multiplies back against your main campaign at a 10% rate. Uh, in a time gate, it's uh, a quarter of that. So for every E01, it multiplies back at 2.5%. Uh, so people don't necessarily push uh, as deep in a time gate uh, as they would you know, in an event, simply because sometimes the effort isn't necessarily worth it. You know, grabbing what you can get, getting your, your chests and your champion, uh, and some favor to multiply uh, is usually better than pushing as far as you possibly can and super hard uh, in a time gate because that time and effort that gets put in isn't necessarily rewarded as much. It's always your choice. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, if you're to the point in the game where, uh, like some of us at the high end are, where... <laughs> Time gates and events are really the biggest way we're getting favor, uh, then it can be worth it. Uh, but early on, usually you, you can get more out of your effort just pushing in a regular campaign than super pushing deep in a time gate. So keep that in mind. So over here, again, uh, that was what we showed on the other account, what it looks like when you're opening in a natural time gate, which is what we have this weekend and next weekend. Uh, but if you've already, if you don't have that, or if it's a time when there isn't a natural time gate open, and you have your six pieces, this is what the screen's gonna look like. Uh, the, our, our friendly helper up here says, I need to finish communion with Maestro in order to open another time gate. But if you've found enough pieces, I can open a portal now, and we have. So we're gonna view our available time gates. And instantly we see something different, and that's that there aren't free tags up here. Uh, also, this isn't a year one champion. <laughs> Stokey is, uh, but these aren't noted in that way. These aren't buckets anymore, like they were before. Because in a manual time gate, we can choose any one of any of the event champions that have ever been added to the game. Uh, we are not limited to the three. Instead, we see up here, most popular champions. Right now, uh, the game has determined through whatever algorithm it uses on the back end, uh, that Krull, Zorbu, and Stokey are the most popular. Uh, and this is most likely based on uh, the number of people that have been opening these time gates recently. Makes a lot of sense. Krull's the strongest character in the game. Zorbu's 
not too far behind. Like, he's the strongest support, Zerb is the strongest current DPS. And Stokey is a year one champion from High Harvest Tide, which we just had. Um, and the only way to unlock her now is through a time gate. So a lot of people who were probably playing for the first time opened up some Stokey time gates so that around High Harvest Tide they could get Stokey. Now this is when all these filters come in. So right now we have this as show all. Uh, we can filter to show owned. Uh, so in case you want to just figure out, hey, uh, I don't want to pick up a new champions. I have the champions that I want. Uh, where should I potentially uh, make a decision about putting like some extra gear from a time gate? You can click owned. It's going to show you the most popular owned. Uh, again, that's all of them for mine. Uh, or you can click unowned if you're just looking for champions that you don't have. I, I kind of have them all on this one, so that's not going to show us a whole lot. Uh, but you can also come down here through popularity. Uh, we can go least popular, most popular. So this is most popular. This is least popular. Oh, poor Xander, Quentin, Farida. Mm, womp womp. Um, you can do their item level. So it's going to look at average item level. If we see right here, item level 80, 94, 80. So what do we got? Uh, so these are item level. This is the least geared champions. Uh, all of mine are the same. I, this is a whole other discussion we had last week on Garwa's Guide to Items and Consumables, but I try to give my all my champions a floor in power, and mine is currently at 80. We look at the most the highest item levels out of event champions. We see uh, Sentry, Birdsong, and Ayla. Eh, that's not surprising to me. Uh, at some point, either now or in the past, these were super strong champions, and I dumped a bunch of item levels into them. Not outrageously amounts, but, um, but you know, they're there. Uh, and then time to event, and this is important because like we were saying earlier, sometimes you want to know, like I knew with Liar's Knight coming up, that I was going to get Dinar in slot 2 so I didn't have to pick up Crydle. You can look at time to event um, to see, like, what's coming up. Well, soon we're going to have Krond and Dinar uh, and Avrin. Well, not not necessarily. Uh, Krond is... Uh, <laughs> this may need some adjustment. Uh, Krond was a year one champion in Liar's Knight. Uh, Dinar and Avrin will be showing up in Liar's Knight, though. Um, and then these are, are the the event champions in order coming after that. So you can tell who's coming up and you can make decisions like, well, I really want to pick up Crawl, but mm, he's coming up soon. Do I want to wait for free? No, you just want to grab him right away. Uh, but, you know, some of these others, you know, you may not want to burn a time gate for them right away. Um, and then how, you know, which ones are, are going to be the, which one would I have to wait the longest for? And you'll see the ones that we've just recently had events for, right? Uh, so they're going to show up and you can make your decisions this way. Uh, you can use any of these that you want. Uh, I think most people just de default to most popular champions and see. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not always the most accurate. Some people would argue that Stokey isn't necessarily super popular. Uh, some people were questioning Dinar. I think he's great, but some people don't. But these others, uh, like Krull, Zorbu, Briv, Avrin, uh, Sentry, Melf, like these are all drama. These are all pretty popular champions um, and usable for various reasons in, in the endgame meta. So this is mostly accurate. Uh, but keep in mind it is somewhat influenced just by people's choice. Like if a lot of people, like with Stokey, a lot of people are just flooding around that time to unlock her. That's why they're going to show up here. Uh, now, if you have more questions, I, and I, we're going to answer a lot of this, keep in mind there is a fact in the game uh, that goes over a lot of this. Uh, it is fairly long. You can read through. That's uh, probably a lot of what we're going over today. Uh, it is accessible here uh, at all times. Uh, you can open it. Uh, I think you can open it from this window too. Yep, there's a fact button there. So, when we open one of these, uh, I guess I kind of have to decide here. Hmm. You know what? Uh, for me, because again, I look at a couple different things. I'm going to look at, like, uh, item level, uh, least geared. Um, because for me, at this point, I, I do time gates. There's a reason I have so many time gate pieces uh, stacked up. I would do time gates to raise the level of of these champions or to target a specific champion that I know scales well with gear. So these are my lowest, these are my lowest, but I, I know a lot of these I know, well, they're fine the way they are. I don't necessarily need to scale them with gear. Um, and at the end of the day, 
uh, I would probably end up going with uh, back to back to popularity. I would probably end up going with like Briv, because Briv scales infinitely in terms of his ability to uh, speed up progress with levels. Uh, I might go Melf. Melf does the same thing. These two champions have speed effects that scale forever uh, with item levels. So I would I would end up if I were going to burn one right now, I would end up choosing one of these. I'm not going to uh, because. Well, we already did one on the other account, uh, <laughs> and we can go back uh, to that and talk some more here in a moment. Uh, in fact, let's go over and see uh, how Tutorial Dwarf is faring. Now, uh, unsurprisingly, because this is, uh, you know, uh, a brand new run and he doesn't have a lot of favor and a lot of support, he needs to be helped out. So remember, when you do open a time gate, this is more of a, hi, I now have to pay attention to the game again, unless you have lots of familiars. Uh, or bonuses, uh, but as a new player, you're gonna you're gonna want to pay attention because it's just like starting a new campaign, which is effectively like starting the game over again. Uh, you're gonna have to give it some uh, some attention uh, to make sure it can move forward. Uh, so just go through on time gates. Uh, we'll talk about some of the more frequently asked questions. I think we we covered a few of these, but we'll touch on them just again, just in case. Again, and I, I am seeing a list populate of questions over here uh, from Jay, who's already thrown like 20 questions into the list, uh, which we'll get to when we hit the Q&A later uh, in the show. So, will a time gate always give me a champion I don't have? Uh, yes, uh, until you have them all, right? Uh, but it is always going to give you at least one champion that you don't have. Uh, and now it's always going to give you at least one from uh, year one on a natural time gate. Remember, these are the natural time gates. Uh, on manual time gates, you will always be able to pick anything that you want. Uh, what type of champion should I prioritize? Uh, well, we kind of went into that. I mean, uh, I think in general, when you first start off, you want to prioritize just some some good support champions that are going to help you uh, push real far. Uh, and then after you get a couple of those, grab a couple speed champions because as you start pushing into the 300s and the 400s, it's going to take a while to get through those earlier levels, and the speed champions will help you do that. Even if you, even if you swap them out after they've done their duty, and ran you up to closer to your wall, and then you put your your pushing champions back in, um, it's a good it's a good way to balance that early on. Uh, so definitely do that. Uh, should I choose a champion I don't own or get gear for one I use? It depends. Like so many things in this game, it really depends. Um, Again, is the champion that you don't own, that you're picking up, something that you can use without a lot of gear? Because again, you're not, you're not going to get a whole lot. You're going to get three gold chests and then, you know, one, two, three, who knows, you know, depending on how far you can push on a time gate, you know, uh, some more. Like on a newer account, you're probably only going to get one, maybe two silver chests. Uh, so you're not going to have a lot of gear for them. So are they going to do a lot for you? Uh, without gear, that's something you got to think about. Um, but then also, you know, uh, once you get to the point where where you've got a lot of champions, uh, if you know that some of those that you're using are good but might be even better with gear, it might be good for you to... Like, if you fleshed out a formation that you really like uh, and your formation doesn't have any major issues, you know, every slot is being useful in a very good way, um, then you can start going back and and looking at the ones that need some better gear and focusing on those. Because uh, then you're just making your team even better. Uh, can I only get gold chests from time gates? We, we kind of talked about that, right? Uh, you get those, you can get up to three, depending on how many that you do, gold chests, out of a time gate. And then you can get those silvers, but it in, again, the amount of silvers that you get are based on uh, your ability to progress through that time gate. Um, on my main account, uh, I can easily grab seven silvers out of a time gate because getting to level 700 isn't that difficult for me. Um, technically, I, if I really wanted to work at it, I could push up and get to 800 pretty easily and maybe 900. Uh, but at that point, I don't prioritize that kind of effort well to only get one, maybe two more chests. But if you're only getting to 100 or 200, and you know with a little bit of effort you could get to that next milestone, uh, it, is, it is, I think, a little more worth it to put in a little effort because, uh, you know, if you, can, if you could get to 100 
And putting in a bunch of effort, like a couple more free plays, deep free plays, might get you that second chest. Well, you're doubling the amount of silver chests you have, which may not seem like a lot, but if you don't have much gear on your champions, those multipliers can, can help quite a bit. Uh, and again, if you're going from 200 and you think you're close to 300, try to put in a little bit of effort and get that 300 if you can. But if, if you know that normally you could run to like 225 and that's just been your wall, there's no reason to try to push it all the way to 300. Um, it's just if you're really close, uh, put in the extra effort. Uh, so should I just push for favor in time gates or just exit? Uh, again, uh, I, I don't think with time gates, unless you're kind of more at your end game, which you will know on your own and you don't need my advice, uh, you probably it's probably not as big a deal to push for favor in time gates. You push for favor to get enough favor to be able to do that third variant, whatever it is, like if it ends up being something that requires you to go, you know, isn't the 75, the lucky 75 we got in that one, um, then yeah, yeah, you're definitely going to want to do, you're going to want to push for some favor, but you don't necessarily want to super, go super hard on favor like you do in an event um, because of the way those, those conversions work. Uh, now, one thing, oh, I, we will go back over to this account and let's hop into just a regular mission because we want to look at the patron shop um, because again uh, kind of tips and tricks one of the, the tips we talked about earlier the big one to, to really maximize the number of time gate pieces you get each week is once you can unlock a patron or preferably all three if we go to their shop again uh, the first thing they offer is a time gate piece they'll only let you buy one each week uh, and the shop resets every Monday so every Monday everyone's scrambling to get their time gate piece uh, it is 2,500 of their currency, uh, so you do have to earn regular currency regularly every week, but you tend to earn more than enough to get this uh, each week, as long as you're putting in a little bit of effort. Um, so, this currently with the three patrons we have, that means you're getting roughly four, if you have all three of them unlocked, you'd be earning four time gate pieces a week, which means every, every two weeks uh, you're running a time gate. Uh, and normally a time gate is ever a natural time gate is every three weeks so you're getting you know three champions a month roughly if you work on that or at least three attempts to get gear on champions a month however you're working it out um, as they add more patrons uh, obviously then the amount of time gate pieces each week will go up at some point you'll get enough out of patrons and the, and the basic drop each week to be able to open a time gate every week if you want uh, we are not quite there yet though Hey, want to learn more about time gates? Uh, one second. Okay. Uh, and then the other one, uh, the other tip I would say, uh, time gates are pretty straightforward, so there's not like lots of tips and tricks for these. Um, I kind of touched on it earlier. Watch what events are up, up coming up next to help you make these decisions. Again, there's a filter for it uh, in the time gate uh, UI. Oops, that's the wrong. I wanted achievements. But there's also, if you go to achievements, Collapse all. If you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to know what's what event is coming up next, right? Because it rotates. Most recent is at the top, my Harvest Tide. The next one coming up is Liar's Night, and you can just come right here and see. Uh, again, Krond was year one, so he won't be in the event. That will be Time Gates only. Uh, but Dinar and Averin will both be coming in the next Time Gate. That's how you can tell what's coming soon. Uh, Feast of the Moon is going to be right after that. Uh, that would have been Grama, but now it's just going to be Vlanya and Sentry. Uh, so you'll get a, a support champion uh, and a, a tank slash speed champion. And we're going to talk about speed uh, here in a bit. So you can use those methods uh, to kind of give you an idea of what's coming up next and help you to make your decisions uh, when it comes to time gates. Now, let us hop back over and we will, we will look over here. We're going to talk about combat since uh, we're, we're facing some right now and we're pushing forward through this time gate, uh, there are things that are going to... Like, one of the best things that's going to help you make progress in time gates and events and just in the game in general is learning to understand the combat system. We did talk about formation strategy, how to build a formation, so I, I've already kind of been moving champions into uh, the places that I want them based off the layout. Like, this layout is going to be different. Uh, every... Uh, come, come on. There we go. Uh, every champion in an event has their own unique uh, formation layout. So this is one of the ways they kind of 
force you uh, or encourage you, whichever way you want to look at it, uh, to learn to build out formations and to understand your champions. They're going to give you something that looks a little off from what you're used to in the main campaigns, uh, and you have to build out a formation that works to help you push uh, deep. Um, and, you know, uh, they're each going to have their own uh, pros and their own cons. Uh, and then, of course, the whatever adventure they're on with bosses are also going to be something they have to keep in mind. Um, but go check out uh, Garo's Guide to Formation Strategy if you need basic info on building a formation. What we're going to talk about is how kind of one of those factors that goes into the building that formation, and that's the roles. Uh, so if we open this up, we're going to look right here. There's a tag for each champion. Uh, called role, which is going to give you an idea of what this champion's primary purpose is. Uh, now, sometimes you can use a champion outside their role. Uh, we will get into that a little bit, but that's usually the exception uh, and not the rule. So right now we're looking at Brunor. He's he's support, uh, and you you kind of like by looking at him, you go, wait a minute, like he's a fighter. He's got a shield and armor. Shouldn't he be a tank? But no, nope, nope, he's a support champion. Uh, so visually, you can't always tell uh, what they're going to be. You need to open up this up, this up and, and see. Uh, now, Brunner is a little tankier than some champions, so he's one of those exceptions. Sometimes he can be in the front line, if he has to be, if you have no other choice. Uh, but we have options here, uh, and we're going to use them. Uh, Celeste, also, if we look up, she's healing and support. So... I mean, this is kind of the cue. How many roles are there? Uh, there are five official roles, uh, unless I'm completely forgetting something. Uh, there should be a tank, a DPS, support, healing, and gold. Uh, those are our official roles. So if there's official roles, are there unofficial roles? And there is. There's one unofficial role that the, the community has created called Speed. Um, we talked a little bit about that uh, a moment ago, and we'll get into that uh, more. I don't really have any speed champions on this account, so we'll go back to my other account in a bit and look at that. But we can focus on just those core five. So tank is what it sounds like. DPS is what it sounds like. Support, again, support can vary as to what it does. Uh, but for the most part, they are there to be supportive and to help the rest of the team. Uh, but they can do that in a lot of different ways. Uh, they are the most varied of the champions. Healing, kind of what it sounds like, right? Some of them do provide healing if you have taken damage. Uh, others, though, they also uh, throw shields, like uh, which what we call shields, but which they refer to in-game as temporary hit points. They throw that out there uh, as a healing thing. Uh, it is damage prevention. It isn't necessarily damage... Uh, aid, like healing. It isn't direct healing, but keep in mind that healing does include those temporary hit point shields as well. And then gold is is a reference to increasing your gold find, which, as we all know, gold is, is super important, uh, but does have to be balanced with the rest of your team to make sure that you're filling out the other roles. So Celeste is in that healing support role. She is a champion that does do actual healing. Uh, she will heal uh, the, the column in front of her, or two in front of her, but if you choose a specialization for that. Uh, and Nayeli is our tanking support. So in most cases, you are going to see the tanking role uh, shared with the support role. Most cases. Uh, the notable exception is Archon the Cruel. Uh, he is a tank DPS. He is not there to help you. Uh, he, can, he can tank uh, and he can do some damage, but he's, he's not there to help the rest of the group, really. Uh, and now we have enough gold to add Jarlaxle. Uh, and that's fitting, because Jarlaxle is a DPS, which we didn't have any of yet uh, in this formation, and he's gold. So he's going he's gonna to be your primary source of damage uh, if you build your formation correctly. And he's also going to help you earn more gold. Uh, so we're going to throw him up here. Uh, so this is kind of the... the at the most basic, we are looking at, a, a, at the most basic formation of a tank, a DPS, uh, a support champion, and another support champion that's a healer. Uh, and as you know, like any adventuring party in DVD, D and D, there, there you go. You're solid, right? Uh, this is the the kind of the core feature you're going to want to look at when you're looking at things for roles. We know upcoming we have Calliope who says healing is support. Uh, her healing is the temporary hit point shields uh, that we see down here. Uh, so you get two different types of healing right away. So with these roles, we do want to keep. Uh, 
keep in, them all in mind as we're building out formations. Obviously, if you have a tanking support champion, uh, you are generally going to want them to be up here in this, what we call the tanking column. So the column that's actually going to get hit by the damage as the as the enemies run into them. Uh, I think we're, we're probably to the point where we're killing everything too quickly for us to build up. Then we'll see. So these ranged enemies are always going to shoot the, the champions. Well, not always. Are usually going to shoot the champions in the front row. Uh, there will be some variants and some bosses that let things damage everyone. Uh, in which case you have... There's different things about the rolls that are going to help you there. Uh, but in general, you're going to see uh, the tank is going to want to be in the front to tank that damage. Uh, and then based off your formation rules, like building your formation, you're going to want to focus your support support buffs onto just your one DPS champion. In most cases, you are just going to want to have that one DPS roll. Uh, sometimes uh, a champion will have a support slash DPS in, in their role, so they, they can fulfill both, in which case they can be in there as the support, uh, but you're still going to want to have somebody that is doing your your primary source of damage, which right now is Jarlaxle. Um, saw me hover over hover over that lightning bolt down there. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Uh, but that is, we're going to get into base DPS versus average DPS versus BUD. This is how you determine these, these kind of numbers uh, as you progress through the game are going to be how you determine who is who is your primary DPS? Are you focusing things correctly? Uh, how do you swap things in and out of a formation to make those decisions? Uh, and it's going to be coming off of one of those three calculations, uh, and we'll talk about which, why you would use each of them and which one ultimately is going to be better for you right after I cough again. Okay, so uh, I don't want to get into that conversation yet before talking about buffs versus debuffs. So we've talked about roles. Uh, you're going to have champions that have different roles. Uh, I'm going to level some of these up so, you know, so they're actually doing their thing while we talk. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, we talked a bit about uh, buffs versus debuffs in terms of, or we talked a bit about roles, but what we need to learn now before we get into uh, those DPS calculations is buffs versus debuffs. So in most cases, like most of the champions you're going to see, uh, especially with support tags and tanking support tags, uh, they're going to offer buffs to other champions. Uh, so we see right here, uh, Brunor's uh, big buff is Rally, increases the damage of champions in the same column as Brunor. Uh, that's why we have our DPS of Jarlaxle in the same column. Uh, we see Celeste, she has Crusader's Mantle, increases the damage of champions next to Celeste by 257, which is where it is with her gear. Um, so that's why we have uh, Celeste right up here. Uh, she could be here, she could be here. She just can't be here because then she's only buffing uh, Bruno, right? So we want her next to our DPS. Uh, and and Nyeli actually has an Aura of Courage, which increases the damage of champions in the column behind her, which is why we had to put Jarlaxel, uh, right behind Nayeli, right? These are the restrictions that you're going to want to look at, but these are the things that are going to provide buffs to your team that are going to allow Jarlaxel to do all the damages, uh, and as you ramp those buffs up by upgrades and by gear, uh, they're going to become uh, even bigger, and you're going to end up seeing, like, uh, like we see right now that Jarlaxel, we see some damage numbers under here. Uh, it said 8 E10 damage, roughly, uh, and we see Brunor is like just below that at seven. Well, this is because right now we're everything's kind of getting buffed in this column, and we're not necessarily fully focusing purely on Jarlaxel yet. If we had moved Celeste over here, uh, we'd see more of a difference, right? Brunor drops down to one E10, uh, whereas Jarlaxel stays the same. This is kind of the the focus of buffs. Eventually, as we would level up and build out this formation, we're going to see. Uh, Jarlax will just do way more, way more damage. Uh, oops, I did not click the upgrade on that one. That works though. All right. Um, so when we're looking at just straight buffs, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about abilities that just give a boost to other champions' damage based off whatever restriction we're reading into them. They're really straightforward. They're kind of the most straightforward thing that we have in terms of abilities in the game. It's just like, hey, uh, I am increasing your damage. Thank you, right? Uh, now, the other thing we get into are debuffs, uh, and we're not going to be able to talk about this uh, on this account, because 
this this account doesn't really have a lot of debuffers going on. Uh, so let's come over here, uh, and we're actually going to change parties. Boom! Multi-party mode in action, folks. This party will continue to do its thing uh, in Mad Wizard, earning me gems. Uh, but we will come over to another Mad Wizard run. Uh, and we'll look at who's here. Uh, and we will uh, make some decisions. So we're going to add the biggest debuffer in the game in Crawl. So, uh, in this party, uh, we do have a lot of buffs going on. We do have characters that are providing buffs, but we also have some characters that are providing debuffs. Uh, and the biggest debuffer in the game, and the reason uh, why he is, is at the top of that Time Gate most popular list, uh, is Crawl. Uh, Crawl provides the biggest debuffs in the game, uh, and it's through his Draconic Plague ability. So every five seconds, Crawl applies a Draconic Plague to the next enemy to spawn. The plagues gain stack every three seconds, increasing their power and capping at ten stacks. Plagues can also be applied by Crawl's base stack. Blah, 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 blah. These are, this is all information you need to know, but this doesn't tell us what's going on. The, the, the debuff we see is down here. So he has a Pilfer Plague that makes enemies drop more gold. He has a Pain Plague that makes enemies take more damage. This is the debuff. He has a Traitor Plague that makes enemies damage other enemies around them. But Pain here is the big debuff. This is the one that makes him uh, the best debuffer in the game. Uh, so he basically forces, he debuffs your enemy. This isn't something that goes on your champions. This goes on the enemies. He makes your enemies take more damage. That's fantastic. Like, you would think, well, isn't that the same as, as a buff? Like, isn't it just increasing damage? And yes and no, right? Like, we're going to be increasing our champion's damage uh, by buffs, but when we debuff an enemy, uh, other rules can take effect. Um, things can kind of stack up, and you can start doing things that maybe... Maybe you didn't think that you, you could otherwise. Uh, and the, some of these debuffs uh, don't just apply to champions, right? So when I was buffing up my group in the other, uh, in the other formation on my other account, uh, everything said it was going to increase the damage of champions. But one thing we do know is that we also have click damage in the game that we can use sometimes. Well, debuffs, uh, a lot of them, just because they're just increasing the damage enemies takes, they can combine with click damage uh, and let you do some fun little things uh, with that, which is uh, currently one of the super in-game strategies is click debuff. And that means you're just leveling up your click damage super high uh, and you're just stacking lots of debuffers and, and working that way. It does take a lot of favor. It is more of an in-game strat. We're not going to get into that. But keep in mind that debuffs, in, in that sense, debuffs can do things uh, that buffs can't. Um, and they can become kind of a big, strong focus uh, for the game. So, Krull isn't the only debuffer in the game. He's just one of the biggest ones. We have Warden in here uh, with one of his skins. So, if you if you didn't recognize him, uh, here's the Warden normally, and all corrupted. And this is his Siren Knight skin from before he became corrupted. Uh, Warden does a debuff as well. So, it's his Hex. Cast Hex on enemies as they attack them, debuffing them and causing them to take more damage from all champions. Uh, so, yeah, Warden is another debuffer. Uh, there are uh, quite a few. Uh, and some debuffs, uh, again, unlike buffs, uh, they have a little bit of a bonus currently in the game in that once they're applied by a champion, uh, like Warden, Warden can apply his Hex debuff to an enemy, uh, then you can actually pull Warden out and put a different champion in, and his debuff stays on the enemy. This, again, makes debuffs really strong, because with buffs, that character has to actively be in the party to be buffing the damage of the champions. But with a debuff, in some cases, you can apply a debuff, then pull out the champion, uh, and the debuff still sticks around, and you could put a buffing champion in and then kind of maximize the damage being done. Uh, not all debuffers work that way. For instance, Krull, if if Krull puts his plague on an enemy and I pull Krull on my formation, that plague goes away. Uh, so this is something you have to learn about buffs and debuffs, but this is the big, the big difference between buffs and debuffs, is buffs 
you only get while the champions are in the formation. Debuffs can be applied in some cases by some champions, and then you can remove those champions, put other debuff in, uh, debuffers in, and and get things even worse uh, in some cases. Uh, that is basically called debuff stacking or debuff swapping, uh, whichever term uh, you're you're more comfortable with, you feel is more appropriate. Uh, we'll we'll hop this back over because we're going to want to talk about party one some more in a bit, but we're going to go back over here. Uh, but in this in this uh, situation, we don't have any debuffers, so this isn't a conversation we're necessarily going to have over here. Uh, but it is something to keep in mind because I do have crawl. Uh, so it is something, even even as a newer account, which this is, uh, it just started three weeks ago. I did do a time gate, I did get crawl, so I do need to understand uh, how crawl works, right? And how debuffs work, and so that I can use crawl effectively. Okay, folks, so now we get into... Uh, i got to take a breath for this one. I may, need, I may need some water before we get into base DPS conversations. Hold on. Okay, so, uh, away we go. Base DPS versus average DPS versus base ultimate damage. First off, what the heck are those things, right? Um, let me go back and default one of my settings here. Uh, where is it? Okay. So this is how you start out in the game. Uh, with this information uh, panel up here at the top left, you start out with a number here, uh, that's called base DPS. Uh, this is supposed to be representative of the damage uh, that your party is doing. And if we look at it, we see, like if we look at Jarlaxle directly, we see 1.2 E12. We see a base DPS of 199 E12. So feels very fairly close, right? We see everybody else is a little lower. Oh, Bruner's actually doing way more. So who knows what's going on right now, right? Um, but basically what we're looking at is, is this is an evaluation, a rough evaluation approximation of what your DPS is when you're attacking. That's what it's trying to give you. Um, early on when you're just dealing with, with just straight buffers, uh, and with fairly simple buffs off of champions, uh, base DPS is fairly accurate. We just noticed it didn't look super accurate there because Bruner is actually higher damage than Jarlaxle and that isn't necessarily reflected here. Um, and this is kind of one of the reasons why you don't necessarily want to stick to the, using this base DPS calculation uh, all the time. Now as you noticed I was leveling up if you were paying attention. These numbers went up and they became green. Well, what base DPS is kind of there to try to tell you is if you make changes in your formation, uh, is it good or bad, right? So we just saw it get red and go down. Uh, it's trying to give you this approximation of, like, if I move people around, how is it affecting my damage? Uh, again, early on, it's going to do a decent job. Like, we saw a little bit of a change there, but why? Uh... This specific change is because Brunor gets more damage if he, the more people he has around him. So we are seeing it kind of tick up and tick down as we move Calliope. Uh, and then we could see like major changes. Like if we move them back there, or if we swap these two, suddenly, you know, Brunor isn't the one doing the damage anymore. Now Jarlaxle is, right? So these are things you can play around with early on when you're, when you're newer and you're making your formations and you don't have a lot of debuffers. But, as we've already seen, it isn't necessarily super accurate. And like now it says... Yeah, let's put this back over here. Now it's actually showing Brunor in the E1E14 range with and Jarlaxle in the E15, like 1.92. And yet this says 375. Why is it off? It's making some calculations based off things that it doesn't have information for yet. Um, so, if we look at... Nayeli. Nayeli has her Aura of Courage, which increases the damage of champions in the columns behind her. But she also has Aura of Protection, which increases damage of all champions for each enemy attacking Nayeli and or each enemy in Rage Stack. Well, we don't have anyone attacking Nayeli, and we don't have any in Rage Stacks, but the game 
is already giving us a bit of a calculation of what our damage would be like if we did. It's factoring that into base DPS. So base DPS is an estimate of what kind of an average damage this might this formation might put out if all of these buffs were active. Um, it is calculating the specific buffs, like direct buffs, like like Crusader's Mantle here, these direct buffs, but anything that has a stack to it or, or a champion that applies a debuff, it tries to do kind of a rough calculation. Because debuffs are applying to enemies, though, it doesn't necessarily read that. Um, it's only gonna it's only gonna factor in these straight buffs, and it's gonna give you approximations of what it would be like if you had some stacks for some of these stacking buffs. So once you start dealing in dipping into the realm of champions that function off of these types of types of building stacks, uh, your base DPS is well. It's gonna lie. Uh, it's not really telling you what's actually going on. It's gonna lie. We, I say this a lot, all the time in the community, that base DPS is a lie, because it is. The more involved you get in the game, the more it's gonna lie to you. It's trying its best. It really is. Uh, and and again, early on, it's gonna be fairly close. We're not too far off, and we know that. I mean, Jarlaxle is doing two E15 right now. Uh, so we know we're not too far off, and if you understand why the difference exists, you can understand how to make your formation adjustments based around that. Like, for instance, when I when I moved Calliope up here because I saw green and red, while, while this is going up, it's going up because it's kind of adding in some fudging some damage for Brunor, but Brunor isn't our DPS, so I have to know that that, that doesn't matter. That in both of these situations... Jarlaxle's doing the same amount of damage, uh, and ultimately, I'm probably, unless something changes, I'm probably going to want Calliope here, because Calliope has features that shield people within two of her. If I move her all the way up here, I can't shield somebody that's all the way down here, if I need it. I may not need it, but I'd rather prepare, right? If I can. Uh, I may have to change my formation later to account for that, but... Uh, a lot of formation building is preparing for what your formation is going to be when you get into trouble and not just what's going to give you the most right in that instance, right? So, uh, we need to keep that in mind that this is what base DPS is telling us and why. Why this number is maybe a little off. Uh, the other option, if we saw, we have a DPS breakdown that keeps sneaking out over here, but we'll get to that in a minute. The other option that we see in this, if we pull this out, you can click that little button and pull it around so you can see it. Uh, there's a base DPS column that's going to tell you approximately what each person is doing, again, with that kind of fudgy math. Uh, and then there's a running average. Uh, here, we actually have a tooltip that's going to tell you exactly what it's trying to do. Uh, but then we have a running average, which is basically your average DPS uh, as, compu as commuted, computed uh, based off like a combination of the attacks that they've done recently. Um, it is going to more heavily factor the more recent attacks over older attacks, but it is going to keep some of that older attack in there for reasons. Uh, because sometimes your your DPS can be real swingy based off uh, applied debuffs or stacks that are building up, and it kind of wants to give you, again, it's kind of fudging the numbers a bit to give you that appearance of of what your damage can be and not necessarily what exactly it is at any given moment. Uh, as we saw earlier, I, because of how base DPS is a bit of a lie, uh, and average DPS is a bit more about the accurate things that are going on, I go in here to DPS display, and I switch the DPS display over to average DPS, uh, because I prefer to see a bit more of what I'm doing at average, but that is because I understand what these two are doing uh, and I would prefer to look at this one now what happens is I'm not gonna see switches now see I'm moving this around and I'm not seeing that green up and down instantly so what that does with changing that is it means I can't use that as a feature for determining how I'm building my formations but that's okay because I understand how to build my formations what each of my champions do 
and where they are more optimally placed. Um, and instead, what I'm going to use is I'm going to watch, I'm going to make changes, and I'm going to watch this over time to see where it goes. But what I'm really going to watch is this number down here by the lightning bolt, which is our bud. It's the short term for it. It's base ultimate damage. So this number, you'll see, is, is different uh, from any of the other numbers that we see here, like running averages up in the fours. Uh, we're doing 1e15 e on Jarlaxle, so... Garora, why the hell is this at 3e14? Well, what Bud does is give you uh, kind of the, the actual numbers of your actual damage per second from your champion. So it explains this to you. Your Bud is based on the DPS of the highest hit that any champion has recently achieved against a single enemy. Now, it uses single enemy because if your champion is a multi-attacker or has an AoE attack, it's, it's not going to take all that damage that it just did to a huge group and then calculate it. It's going to take whatever the damage was to one enemy uh, and then divide it by, as we see that five seconds, that's the attack cooldown for Jarlaxle. As we see, five seconds. So it's going to give us that number of Bud, which they call Bud instead of just calling it DPS. They're going to call it Bud uh, because it's going to give us that flat number, which is 3.84E14. That is Jarlaxle's actual DPS right now. And then what it's going to do is it's going to use that value to determine uh, to be the base multiplier, or base ultimate damage, for your ultimates. So this is what generates the damage uh, that you see here on your ultimates. So now, see, this says 4.41E15. That means there is a, a multiplier for this ultimate off on top of the base ultimate damage that is more than 1.0. Uh, sometimes we will see different amounts. Like here, this is 2.21. This is 3.86. Uh, so all of these, these three ultimates are all getting a multiplier of over 1.0 against your base ultimate damage. Um, and this is a factor uh, that is more pure in terms of how much damage am I doing at any given time. I can watch as Jarlaxle attacks and know exactly what my damage is. I don't have to see some kind of an average. I can see it right away. Um, now, if we'll notice, there are some more information here. This value degrades over time until it's replaced with a bigger hit. So we're seeing him attack. Uh, the reason it's taking so long for it to reset is more that there just aren't enemies on the screen for him to attack. Other people are there. He just attacked, he reset it. Um, so it will go down over time, but that also lets you know when you're dealing with stacking things that yes, maybe you had a big stack and that ramped up your, your bud, like your damage per second, because those stacks were buffing and then you cleared everything. Well, now you're doing less damage per hit, but your bud is still there. This is what you got recently. This is what you can achieve again. Um, and, and this is the great part about it, it means that you can fire off ultimates and continue to do large, heavy amounts of damage based off that spike that you got in your bud. The other way you can spike your bud uh, is to apply a bunch of debuffs like we were talking about earlier. So if it, if it didn't completely make sense why you would want to swap in somebody who can apply a debuff that sticks around when you swap them out, now hopefully you do. Because by stacking all of those together, not only are you able to kill that one enemy, but when you hit that one enemy, you're going to set your bud at a very high amount because it had a lot of debuffs on it. And then you'll be able to use your ultimates to do a heavy damage to everything else uh, and basically wipe everything out. This is what people refer to as bud spiking in the community. This is why bud is a big deal. This is why debuffers are a big deal because the more debuffers you can swap in and out if, there's buffs, if their buffs stay, their debuffs stay on enemies uh, and then you apply buffs and then you ramp up this super high damage, that lets you push super deep. That kind of manual manipulation is what really allows people to push uh, as far as they do. Uh, the other the other uh, way is that click debuff we were talking about. But these two things are what people are using super deep, uh, but also just at, at low level walls. I use this on, on my current account. I don't have a lot of debuffers to swap, but I do have crawl. And I do know that I can use crawl to build up debuffs and be able to spike damage. And I can watch my bud and I can use I can use ultimates if I get a super high spike, and I can clear out enemies, right? These are, these are the factors that allow you to push super deep. It's going to allow you to push super deep in your time gates and make them easier to complete. 
Uh, it's going to allow you to push super deep in events. And because time gates and events are basically just miniature versions of campaigns, it's going to let you learn. And these are just ways for you to learn to do that in the main campaign as well. So these things are going to help you out uh, across everything in the game. Um, just make sure you know, like, again, you can put whatever numbers you want up here as long as you understand that base DPS, uh, again, it says it's not dynamically affected by timed or random events, stacking, or enemy debuffs. Right? It's just kind of fudging what it might happen with buffs. Uh, running average is going to include both buffs and debuffs, but again, it's going to have this fluctuating thing over time, and it's going to, if, if you get a real big debuff stack and you do a lot of damage in one hit, it's going to ramp up your running average a bit, and it's going to take it a while for it to kind of come back into normal uh, if that was a true outlier in damage, whereas Bud is going to be more reactive to what's actually going on. So most people, when they get to their wall, they're using, if they're if they're uh, pushing real far, if they're playing effectively, they're using a combination of both bud and what level they're on to determine the effectiveness of formation changes uh, and debuff swapping and things like that. So at your wall, that combination of A, is it getting me a real high bud? And B, is it pushing me further? Uh, or how you determine if you're making good decisions in, in your formation building. Uh, keep in mind, though, that even though this is your base ultimate damage, uh, and this is your DPS, there are going to be times at your as you get further along and you have debuffers, that whereas normally this would tell you if you could kill something at the level you're on, which says, like, these have E13 health, so I can kill them, as you apply more debuffs, suddenly you'll be able to kill higher... Like, things that have more health than you do damage for. Again, because you're forcing that enemy to take more damage. And you'll end up getting, like, outrageous numbers. E10, E20, E50 health above what your damage is because of the way you're stacking debuffs. So debuffs are a big deal. Bud is a big deal. Uh, if you take anything away from the conversation today about combat, those two things are going to be the things that you need to understand the most of like how to properly use debuffs alongside buffs and how to use bud uh, to basically judge how effective you're being, right? Uh, we died, but we done uh, with this conversation uh, for, the, for now. We're going to hop into uh, the Q&A here in a second. Uh, we're going to take a quick break uh, while I set that up and I make sure we have all the questions lined up. It looks like we do have a lot. Um, we do have... And now I'm off because we started a little late. I believe we got about 45 minutes. So that was a little more than an hour. But these are important things uh, and timely things to talk about. So it was good that we talked about them. So give me one moment. I'll be right back, everyone. back oh, what did that do oh hey that's my other account that's why we had swapped over let's go back over here uh we kind of talked about i just remembered we talked about most of the roles uh and i forgot about speed so we're going to do that real quick right here <laughs> speed is the unofficial one which is why i forgot it's not a tag in the game uh there are speed champions deacon is one he is a support champion but he has a speed effect uh so, if we look down here, his is confidence is the boss. When Deacon has fewer than six stacks of Story of Doom, the speed of enemies spawning is increased by 200%. So basically, that means that enemies come out quicker and we kill them quicker, as long as we're killing them fast, which is what we're doing here. This is why Deacon is in this formation. Uh, different speed champions have different effects. Shandy speeds up the game like a speed potion, just speeding up everything that's going on. Uh, that's her right here. Melf has uh, multiple effects. Uh, so it just depends. He's got a variety. Sentry reduces your, your requirements up here at the top right to move forward. Uh, Havilar gives you double credit for things. Uh, so each different type of speed champion uh, is going to have a different effect. And 
those effects are listed in their abilities, but you have to understand just kind of what makes a speed effect to know if they're a speed champion uh, because they don't have a roll tag. Uh, so keep that in mind. I do have a tier list to speed champions on the Reddit. Someone can put exclamation point gar underscore guides in chat and that will link there and you can find that tier list. And it explains what each of those champions does and kind of uh, gives you uh, the requirements to really maximize their usage as well. Uh, so let's start, dive into the Q&A right off the bat. I'm, I'm going to try to do the ones that are uh, uh, on topic first. Uh, so let's let's get into that first. Uh, how do you get the most out of a time gate when you start doing them for gear? Uh, so it depends. Again, you, you kind of have to know how far you can push in a time gate, right? Uh, so right off the bat, you just want to make sure that you're doing you, you at least have enough power to do all three of those uh, first uh, gold chest uh, completions, right? So the two adventures and the variant to get you those guaranteed gold chests. That's going to get you the super good gear. Uh, the the silvers that you get are supplementary because silvers in this sense are just going to be, they're either going to be filling out empty uh, slots that you have. If, if it's a brand new champion, you don't have any gear at them all. It's going to help you just have some kind of gear, which is better than none. Uh, and later it's going to help you get item levels because uh, silver chests uh, a little bit give you more item levels than gold chests uh, and because you can get a lot of them you can add more item levels to those champions uh, normally with event champions you're adding that power via blacksmithing contracts though uh, but the time gates can be a bit of a boost uh, but basically it's just maximizing a time gate is about uh, using your time effectively so i like to hop into a time gate uh, and I don't just, like I said, I don't just run to 50 and complete on like my main account. Uh, I will throw in like uh, some some speed and some power and some fire breath potions. I'll do like an, on my account, I know I can do an hour. Uh, on some accounts, maybe you want to do like a half an hour um, if, you're, if you're newer. But basically I know with an hour, I can push into like five to level five to 600 with speed champions, again, and, and super powerful accounts. I can do that uh, by the use of fire breath potions. Um, which I forgot. Fire Breath Potions function off of Bud. We talked about this in my items and consumables, so I don't feel too horrible about that. But another reason you want a Bud Spike is because if you've if you've got familiars out and you pop a Fire Breath Potion, when you Bud Spike, you can use that damage uh, from that Bud Spike to just click kill enemies with a Fire Breath Potion. Um, so yeah, you can push super far. I, I just do that effectively on my first run. I don't try to push to my wall. Again, my wall is like 900. Uh, I don't try to do that on my first run on a more developed account uh, because it's not a, it's not time efficient. I can do that hour run on that first one, and then I can do that again on the second, like on the 75 mission, I can do another hour, and I'll go further because I can click kill further, and I'll end up getting to like close to 700, uh, and then I'll push it over 700 just so that I get that seventh chest, and then and then I just do the variant and I bail at the at whatever the variant completion thing is, and I close the gate because I've gotten everything really that I need in the most effective way possible, and I'm done. Um, if, you, if you're not as powerful on your account, you're not going to be able to necessarily do that, but I do recommend that strategy of using that first adventure to get you some favor, but not necessarily super hard grind, uh, because it's more time effective to just move on and do the second adventure. So, you know, do a little bit of pushing, but not outrageous on that first run. Hop into the second, push further, uh, make sure that you get enough favor for what you think is going to help you to complete that third variant without having to do a free play. If you have to do a free play because you get a little bit of bad luck and you get that 175 and you don't think you can quite get there, you can then just jump over and do the free play first. Uh, and then once you can free play up to the completion level, hop over and do the variant. Uh, but ideally, you would just do that first adventure, grab some favor, do the second adventure, have a more efficient push uh, and maybe, you know, get up super high and then do the third adventure and bail, like the third variant, bail right away once you complete that because it's harder to, to push for favor and variants. If you feel like there's some meat left on the bone, as I like to put it, uh, in terms of your ability to get another chest, hop into a, a free play, run it uh, again. This is a good time to use potions. Like I, I find that time gates, getting them done and out of the way quickly is a, is a good time for me to burn potions. Um, but 
the other the other time is if you're if you're in a variant that you need to complete and you're almost there so i have a lot of potions on this account uh, as you can see uh, so i tend to use them for either difficult variants to help me complete them uh, or to just burst through a time gate real fast right uh, so there you go I'm losing my voice today um let's see A lot of these are general questions. I will try to get back to them. They're not necessarily on time gates or combat. Can you reset and enter the same time gate several times? Uh, Kung Abdullah. Yes. Uh, however, keep in mind, uh, every time you enter this, the time gate that you just did, uh, it's going to raise the this number for, for what you can do. Do I have any that are higher? Yeah, like Strix is... She's coming down off a of high. <laughs> Warden I just did recently... So he's at 100 and 125. But if I were to do Warden again, this would jump to 150, 175. The next time, 200, 325. Like, it's just going to keep going up. Uh, I think Anim Anime Imho, uh his Krond is like, I don't know, way up there. Like, I want to say it's like five or 600, because he just did it over and over and over again. And they have a very powerful account, uh, so they can push that deep, right? But there is a downside to just doing the same one over and over again. And that's that you have to be able to push further. Uh, so, you know, don't hamstring yourself by by doing the just one again and again and again. Find a rotation of, uh, I, like I said, three is optimal. You can do four or five, but at least three, uh, the champions that you want to get good gear for, uh, and rotate through them because then that, that requirement's going to stay at 5075 as long as that's where you started at. Uh, do global blessings affect time gates? Operations 2000. Yes, global blessings affect everything. This is why uh, we all, everyone in the community recommends that one of the first things you do is try to just get this double damage buff in each campaign, right? Uh, because these help you do uh, time gates and events, right? They are global. They work everywhere. Now, obviously, all of these others are going to apply too, uh, especially uh, this one for events, but... The main thing is, is these double damage global blessings uh, are going to help you out. And as you get further, uh, these global perks are going to help you out as well. All of these, this right column for all of these champions. This is why I can push so far so fast. Uh, I have all of this, these bonuses from blessings and perks. Uh, and, and my Modron core kicks in right away on a time gate as well and gives me all of those buffs. All of, all of those buffs. Uh, so, yeah, all of those things that apply to you normally in any kind of an event, uh, any kind of a campaign, like in anywhere, like global buffs, those are going to apply in time gates as well. How can you tell which one is a year one champion? Uh, you kind of just have to know. They don't really tell you. Uh, you can go, like I said, when it, when I opened up this, uh, the very first champion, which is Stokey, that is the year one champion. I just know this, but it's always at the top when you look at achievements uh, and the next and so on and so forth. Uh, I keep a list on... Oh, thank you, Modron. Uh, I keep a list uh, of all my guides on Reddit, which is what, what I was directing everyone to earlier. And it has... I have now separated out uh, into a section that I call Timegate Champions. Uh, all of those year one champions so that you know uh, who they are. Uh, you can check that out. Oh... Uh... I'm sh this isn't related, but I'm going to answer this real quick anyway. I'm sure somebody did it already. Aren't free chests only 12 digits, not 16? Where do I put in this code? No. Not all not all free chests are 12 digits. So right down here, there's a there's an option to swap between 12 and 16 digits for the Cryptex. Uh, this gives them a lot more codes they can put out, and they put out a lot of codes every week, folks. So they need they need multiple options. Uh, so I'm lost. Are we getting a new event soon? We'll be a champion for bench number two. Uh, yes, there is a new event. Uh, Liar's Night will be coming up on the 21st. Uh, the 14th, we're going to get a new campaign. Icewind Dale, Realm of the Frost Maiden. 21st will be Liar's Night. Uh, and Dinar and Averin will be returning. Dinar is a slot 2 champion. That's what I was referring to earlier. Uh, what if they give you Zorbu as a free time gate five times in a row? Well, that's going to be difficult because... Uh, every time, you, if you choose him five times in a row, uh, those requirements are going to keep going up. Uh, it's 
Every time you pick a champion, the requirement goes up. Every time you don't pick them, it goes down. So if you got if you got Zorbu first and like once picked him, the next time they offer him to you, but you don't pick him, then those requirements are going to come down a little bit. And the next time you don't pick him again, they don't they're going to come down back to the base. Then that fourth time you could pick him again, and then the next time it's going to come back. You know, it's it's always going to do that. It, it goes up every time you pick. It goes down every time you don't. Uh, with free time gates giving an automatic, I'm a little out of sync. Okay, hold on one moment. This happens sometimes when we have to reload things. Uh, my camera's going to go away momentarily, folks. And hopefully, when it comes back, uh, I will be back in sync. Let's find out. Okay. Are we doing better now? It's doing its little flippy thing. Yes, I think that's right. Somebody will tell me. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate that. Uh, let me know if it updated as well. Uh, what free time gates giving you an automatic year one champion? Is it possible that most the most popular stats might get inflated towards year one? Um, I'm not entirely sure because I don't know if... Again, these are things about the algorithm that I don't work at CNE, so I can't necessarily answer... I don't know if the algorithm takes into account what you're picking in the free ones, or if it just takes into account what you're picking in manual ones. It's possible, but again, it is telling you what's most popular in terms of what's being picked in time gates, so in that sense, it's accurate. Uh, it's not necessarily telling you who gets used most in formations, right? Um, that's something you can get from the community. We'll be getting a new champion in the next event. Yes, uh, every time we get an event, we get a new champion. Uh, with Split the Party, can you run two free plays in a time gate? You're going to have to test that out. You shouldn't be able to. Because you're not supposed to be able to run the same adventure at the same time with two parties. Uh, but what you could do, and it's going to be real weird. I don't recommend getting into this type of mess. Uh, what you could do is run like the base adventure and then throw a second party in a free play, but you're making things harder on yourself because you don't have any you don't have any favor yet. And kind of the point of doing them sequentially is to utilize that favor to make each run easier. Uh, so you can try it out and see, but I feel like that would just be bad for you. Yeah. After you finish a time gate for a certain champion and you open up another time gate for the same champion, is that how you get gear for them aside from patron chests? Um, I mean, usually that's doing time gates repeatedly or, you know, in a rotation is is a way to get gear. I don't consider that the, the easy way to get gear for them, though. It is slow. Uh, for me personally, on this account, I do have, as you've seen, I've, seen, I've got all, uh, all epic gear across... All my champions. Um, I achieved this kind of goal long term. It took me three years uh, with a combination of, you know, those gold chests I got at Time Gates, uh, the free newsletter chests that you get every weekend because that offers gear for event champions, but mostly patron chests, right? Patrons allowed because you in a patron chest you get gear out of for any uh, champion that qualifies for that patron. Uh, so you can really target specific champions. Like if I have three different champions, uh, but one applies, like one patron applies to all of them. Uh, and then the next a patron, like let's, let's say Mert, all of them qualify for Mert. Uh, only one qualifies for Vajra and a different one qualifies for Strahd. Then I would open up, I did, this is exactly how I did it. I opened up like Strahd or Vajra first. Because those chests would, that gear would target just that one champion. And I would get them to Epic, which pulled them out of the Mert pool. And then I did the other one for Strahd, which pulled that one out of the Mert pool. And then suddenly Mert was only giving gear for one champion. And I very easily then geared that champion out, right? You have to make those kinds of things. If you're smart about how you're doing it like that, you're trying to pull people out of pools and minimize the, pool, the pools that gear are going to, you can effectively gear up your event champions and not necessarily have to do uh, time gates over and over to do that. Time gates are a nice bonus, but I think patrons are really the best delivery method right now. 
Uh, what I did do with, with Time Gates specifically, because I'm a bit, everyone knows I'm a bit OCD about my collections, is I went back in and filled in like white slots, like doing those runs to get seven gold, seven silver chests to try to get the white gear that I was missing for all my champions. I have a full collection, all of the gear on all of the champions now. That's just a, a personal achievement uh, that I was trying to achieve. It doesn't get you any power or anything. To be clear, but that is that is primarily what I used time gates for it towards the end. Uh, how are we doing? We got about half an hour. All right, if I reach uh, level 100 in a free play of a time gate and get the silver chest for that, do the other three variants still give silver chest for level 100? No, it's just the first time, regardless of whether you're doing like you can you can get to level 100 in that first adventure. In the second adventure, you get to level 100 again, you're not getting a silver chest. You have to get to 200 then, right? It's it's a stepping stone. Each each unique 100 levels that you get, you get one chest for. Now, if you do that time gate and then close it and then open it again, you now get a fresh run of silver chests. Uh, so, uh, I have 115 time gate pieces. Uh, I thought I should collect them for the patron unlocks. No. But I should probably use them, right? Also on a scale from 1 to 10, how dumb of it. Yeah, it's not... You just haven't been as effective, right? The only patron that needs time gate pieces to unlock is Mert. You can't see it here, but he requires like three time gate pieces to unlock. And that's it. Then he's unlocked. You can use them forever. You don't have to worry about those time gate pieces. Now you need to use those time gate pieces to pick up champions you don't have or to gear up those champions. So go forth. Go forth and prosper. Uh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of time gate runs. Uh, again, can you split the party in a time gate? If you did different adventures, yes, but again, that's really an ineffective use of multi-party. Um, yeah. You just, because you're not getting the benefit of the, of the favor you're earning. You're just making it hard on yourself. Uh, when looking at the Time Gates menu, especially as a new player, not knowing the champions, is there a way to see a description on them? I'm new, and when I mouse over, I don't see anything like DPS, support tank, etc. I know, right? Yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. You don't get anything. You just kind of have to know uh, who they are. And that comes from asking the community or reading a guide, right? Like checking this information out. Uh, you could potentially look at their items. Well, no, they're not going to have any items, so that doesn't make any sense either. Yeah, no. Currently, that is a quality of life upgrade that, that they need. Uh, I would say right now for quality of life, uh, we need to see like a tag for what year champion they are. Like year one, year two, year three, year four. Uh, and we also need to hover over and get an idea of what, what role this this champion uh, fulfills. We don't have those things. Uh, what happens if Briv jumps a 100 level in a time gate? Do you still get the silver chest? Yes, it doesn't matter. You're just, it's, the, the game is checking to see if you've, if you've exceed, completed level 100, like if you've passed level 100 and every, and, and any of the other 100 level increments. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't care how you pass it, just that you pass it, and it gives you those those chests. Uh, what is the best speed champion to pick from a time gate if you have none of them? Uh, so, uh, GFYE, my recommendation, because you're not, as we talked about, you're not getting a lot of gear out of a time gate run if you're just doing one run. Uh, you want to pick champions that are, if you're looking for speed, that are effective without gear. Uh, that's Deacon and Shandy. Uh, these two uh, bundles of speedy energy uh, can do great things without needing any gear. Uh, and they work all the time. Uh, the other is, like, Havilar doesn't need gear, but she is very limited to only speeding things up when there's imps around. Uh, or fiends, excuse me. Uh, whereas, like, Melf and Sentry and... Uh, and Briv, they all want item levels. They want gear and item levels, and you're not going to get that right away. So Sentry and Deacon are great, or Sentry. Uh, Shandy and Deacon are great, uh, right out of the box, fresh, uh, you know, no gear. Um, and then, 
you know, you get all the all the benefits of them right away. Uh, Deacon is a slot one champion, so even if you're a newer player, uh, you can get him to his speed multipliers pretty quickly on a new account. So if you're a newer player, Deacon is probably uh, priority over uh, over Shandy. Uh, just keep in mind, his speed effect is going to be smaller than Shandy. Shandy speeds up the entire game. He just speeds up the speed of spawns, uh, and it only works uh, while you're killing quickly. Hers only works while no one's attacking your formation. So they do have limitations, but they are great right out of the box. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me see what I got. We got a lot of general questions, folks. Uh, I will try to get to them afterwards. Again, we did go a little long on uh, on time gates of combat, um, and I want to try to get all of those questions done. Keep in mind, we also do uh, Garwa's Guide to Everything on Fridays, uh, where it's just it's potpourri. It's whatever whatever topics I answer for the full two hours. I just answer questions. We got through like eighty questions yesterday. It was it was fantastic. Um, I also stream on my own channel down there, Twitch TV slash Garwar on Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, with Idle Champion stuff. And you can always stop by there uh, and ask me questions then too. Uh, so you say that in Time Gates, Krull is the highest priority and then a speed character. Which is the best speed character rush as a new player? We kind of just did that. Uh, so yeah, I think I think if you grab if you're a brand new player and you grab Crawl in your first manual time gate and you grab Deacon in your second manual time gate, you're doing pretty good for yourself. I mean that you didn't really do anything wrong. You're kind of getting the best of, of both worlds for quickly. Yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, ooh, man, lots of general questions this week. I will keep this in mind for when we are doing. Uh, more stuff. Let me try to find maybe some combat questions. Maybe we're doing a lot of the time gate ones. Uh, wow. We're all over the place, aren't we? Um, so, uh, in terms of combat, if I swap Krull for Ashara, do his plague still count? No. Uh, Krull is a debuffer who loses his debuffs when you remove him from the formation. Uh, so, whew, man, this game would be so broken. I mean, it's, Krull already kind of breaks it, but, uh, it would be worse if they stuck around. So no, Krull has to stay in. Um, why should I farm favor since it doesn't increase damage? Uh, assuming I have enough favor to fully upgrade champions, so to hit the soft cap. Isn't farming gems better? Hmm... In a campaign, like, like there are, I, I'm, I've got a ton in Torms, but I don't necessarily have a ton in, like, Kelimbor or Helms, right? Like, they've, they're, they've stayed static for, like, a year. Uh, I have enough to complete there. I can hit, I can upgrade my champions to the current soft cap, so I don't see any reason to have more favor. But the other thing I look at favor for is, am I able to complete all the variants? Because some variants need, some variants, like, uh, Tiamat's favor, you'll see I'm up to E37. That used to be down at, like, E30. I raised it because there there's a variant there that requires you to complete it based off click damage. Um, because you're just not going to do it. It's a tale of two champions. You just can't do it with two champions. You have to do click debuff strategy. Um, so favor can be handy there. Uh, gems, when you buy gems, keep in mind, those are only going to upgrade the item levels on... Directly upgrade item levels for your core and evergreen champions. However, out of all those chests you're buying, you are going to get blacksmithing contrasts, which are going to help give you more power for your champions. So... It's not that you need to just farm. Like, once you have enough favor in a campaign to soft cap, that's kind of where you stop necessarily doing deep favor runs in Azaka farms. Uh, and then just focus on, uh, in your free time, like, you complete all the variants, and in your free time you're doing gem runs. Like, like what I'm doing right now on screen. Um, and then I convert all my events and time gates at this point into Torm, because Torm is a campaign that doesn't have an end. Like, the Sword Coast campaign... Will, they will keep adding adventures and variants to that forever. Whereas the storylines in Tomb of Annihilation and Waterdeep Dragon Heist are done. Uh, and the storyline for Descent and Avernus will finish soon at some point. I don't know if it's this year or the beginning of next year, but it will finish. Um, let's see. Clearing a wave makes things spawn instantly, doesn't. Yes, that is why Deacon is important. 
uh, and, and Mel Falsa does a little bit of that as well in one of his speed options. Uh, but the faster you're killing things, if you're killing a wave instantly, uh, a new one spawn, a new wave spawns instantly. Uh, and having those champions in makes them get to the, make them spawn and then get to the point where you can kill them faster. And that's why they're speed champions. Is there a max level for champions in a mission? There is, uh, each one has a different max level. It's what we refer to as the soft cap, uh, it's to the point where you just don't... You can see it down here. Uh, I've got these circle with a line through it. All these champions are soft cap. They're not getting these major upgrades like 200% anymore. Uh, you mentioned that, for example, if we are near 300 in a time gate, we should push it to get a chance. Yeah, if you're at like, you know, 285 and you feel like you can push maybe with some potions and some debuff swapping to get over 300, do it. Uh, if you have to restart and do another free play, it might be worth doing one more free play for. But if you've got to do, like, if you think it's going to take you more than just one more deep push to get favor before you do the next run, uh, it may not be worth your time. That's it's up to you. When should I be spending my favor from the first campaign? Right when you earn it. So right away. Uh, you come over here for your blessings. Uh, you want to click those buttons... Uh, let me hop over onto the other account real quick. Oh, hey, we completed that that thing on that time gate. Uh, I'll hop over here real quick. So, uh, right when you when you earn the when you earn your favor, come over here and click a button. Like, make sure this warnings is enabled. So the green check. Click this button. Uh, if this box comes up, nope right out. You don't want to spend that gold um, or that favor. Because remember, favor is also giving you gold find, and you don't want to hamper yourself. Uh, but if it lets you if it lets you buy it. Uh, it's not going to let me buy any of these. Uh, like if I come here, this one's 2,500. There, I can click it. Okay. Yeah, take it. As long as you can click it and it's going to give you something good, uh, do it. Just make sure you're buying stuff that's going to do good. I haven't bought this because, um, the DPS I'm using right now is a, is a heavy hitter. So I don't need to upgrade this because I don't, I don't really care to spend my money that way. But, you know... Uh, as you can buy it, buy it. Like if you see in Tomb of Annihilation, I've gotten, I mean, I've already maxed out all three tiers and I'm into the fourth and I'm, I, I'm still halfway to unlocking Azaka. So, you know, like you buy it right away, that's going to help you push further, uh, and get you, uh, more progress. So no need to hold on to it. As long as the warning, as long as the warning doesn't pop up. Um... Let me see. What else do we got? Anything else? Uh, what is the purpose of doing a free play time gate quest after you've done the gold chest quest? Uh, it just exists if you want, if you're close to that threshold to get a silver chest and you want to push for it, go for it. Or if you want uh, to farm favor because you're at a point where, you know, events and time gates are the only thing getting you major improvements to a campaign, that's why it's there. Uh, why can I not damage the level 50 boss in my time gate? Uh... I don't know. Either either you just don't have the damage to do it, or maybe it's bugged and you need to just click back uh, and restart the level. Uh, I don't know. Without seeing it, uh, ask in the D in the Discord, uh, and, and someone will help help you figure that out. Okay, I think that's most of them. Let me grab some. We got about eighteen eight minutes. Let me do a bit of a potpourri here. Uh, how was my birthday? My birthday's tomorrow, but we did do a, my birthday stream yesterday for, uh, celebrating. Uh, but thank you for asking. So my birthday is going to be tomorrow and it's just going to be relaxing. I'm tearing apart my, my whole computer setup here, uh, because I got some new stuff and I'm going to put it all back together again tomorrow. And that's going to be an enjoyable day for me. Uh, how was the D and D adventure last night? Yes. Oh my God. So, uh, I got to play D and D last night with, uh, a DM, the wonderful uh, Lauren Urban from D&D &D Beyond. We know her in chat as Oba Lauren everywhere. Uh, she was the DM, uh, and I played with uh, Margaret uh, and Sean and Lee uh, and uh, Nevada, who is uh, uh, Sean's other half, and uh, Mars joined us for part of the adventure. It was so much fun. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I think if you hit up my Twitter account... Uh, and you look at kind of uh, the things that have been going on, like there was some comments, there's some pictures from last night, uh, and then some quotes, and yeah, it was a lot of, it was it was great. We definitely all had a blast and would love to do it again at some point. Uh, 
It was real cool. It was Lauren. Uh, it was a it was a homebrew one shot that Lauren had made, and it was just fantastic. Uh, ooh, did everyone enter the contest for the giveaways for the WizKid minis? I hope so. Go go hit up uh, the Idol Champions Twitter account. Uh, there is a there are giveaways for um, like a, a big bundle of packs uh, of WizKids mini boxes, and then one like bigger one. Uh, they're pretty cool. Go hit it up if you want to win some uh, D&D minis. Uh, my, my pets keep moving from the place I put them. Is Modron changing the formation again and again? If if it's resetting, then yes. Because your, your, uh, your saved formation includes your placement for your familiars. So if you want them to be in a specific place, you need to save your formation uh, and then make sure that that formation is what is loading with the Modron when it resets. If, it's, if they're just changing randomly as you go from level to level, that's a bug and you need to put in a ticket. Uh, did we get a better closed captioning system here? It seems more accurate. No, I think it's just this setup. Uh, I've, I've, you know, I mean, I've been adjusting things slightly to try to make it more accurate. Uh, I did get one of the things I got uh, is a new microphone uh, and a new mic interface to my computer. So it, hopefully it'll get even better. We'll see. We'll see. If it's a downgrade, I'm going to be super upset. Uh, have you saved any formations? My, the, oh yeah, that's that was something. That was a reply to that other person. Uh, let's see. Uh, between Dinar and Averin, which one should I focus on getting gear in the next event? I mean, pick them both up. They're both great. Averin, however, is the best buffer in the game. Like I said before, uh, currently uh, Krull is the best debuffer. Averin is the best buffer. Um... And he does light gear, but Dinar is a real good boy. Uh, and one of my ones that I recommend, if you have not unlocked Dragonbait, if Dragonbait's mission, uh, Soriel's Lament, is giving you uh, major problems, Dinar is the good boy that can help you get past that. Uh, what do you suggest someone from returning from year one to do now? Uh, oof, I mean, read through some of the basic guides on systems to make sure you're caught up with the newer stuff, or watch these shows. They're on YouTube, uh, the CNA Games YouTube channel. Um, I mean, we've covered the new stuff like Multiparty and Modron, uh, and we've covered a lot of the basics and how they work currently. Um, but then just start, prioritize what your progression is. Um, and there's lots of different pillars of progression, like there's... There's, you know, your blessings and your, and there's now patrons and perks. And so if, if, if you aren't, if you don't, you've obviously, since year one, they've added, they've changed a lot of the systems. So it's kind of having to learn things over again. A lot of the champions have changed too. So yeah, just reacquaint yourself and ask lots of questions in the discord. Um, let's see. What was my favorite game moment from the D&D game last night? And was Mars able to make it? Mars was able to make it about half, well, no, about an hour in, I think. Um, we ended up playing for like two and a half hours, roughly, with like a half hour of just general conversation when we started. Um, Mars magically popped in uh, right at the right moment, I think, because that was when we were actually uh, uh, met the big bad uh, and, and entered that whole conversation and ultimate combat. Um, favorite moment? I don't, I don't know. It was just fun. The whole thing was fun. Uh, there were a lot of humorous comments. Uh, the, the game revol uh, revolved around bees, so there were tons of puns about bees and buzzing, um, which is why if you look on my Twitter, there's a, there's a quote about uh, no money, no honey. Uh, that's probably was one of the funniest things is uh, there was this whole spiel the big bad gave us about the bees unionizing and no money, no honey. Uh, but there were just times like when our, our whole combat, I think the whole combat scenario that happened when we, when we actually fought the big bad was hilarious for a lo all, all kinds of reasons. Uh, like uh, the personalities of our party was very varied uh, and seeing everyone's reactions to what we were all doing was was good. Yeah, good times, good times. Uh, I have about 160,000 gems. I'm about 13 epics short on my evergreen champions. Should I blow a big chunk of gems on gold chest to try and complete evergreen epic gear? Part of me wants to just hoard the gems so I can unlock a second core, but that is still a ways out. 
then of course there are many gem cost feats, what to do, what to do. Honestly, if you're not full epic on your core and evergreen champions, I would target that first. Uh, because, you know, even if you're not necessarily using uh, your core and evergreens in all of your formations, what it's going to enable you to do, uh, you're going to get two bonuses. One, you're opening up a bunch of gold chests, which not only are going to give you epic gear, but also give you tons of contracts, like bounty contracts for to burn for events, and blacksmithing contracts to raise uh, item levels. Like, those are effectively being wasted by you hoarding those. Um, you're not getting the use out of all that power. Uh, but you're also going to get feats, potentially, the gold chest feat drops that you might be super useful for champions. Um, but you're going to get that gear, hopefully, uh, finish out that uh, the, the core and evergreen champions in epics, which means going forward, uh, when you're opening up weekend chests, any epic uh, is going to drop for event champions. Uh, because you, you're not going to dupe an epic unless everyone from that chest is has got epics. Uh, you're also going to get those epic drops straight on to event champions from patron chests. Um, so getting getting that feature in is not only not only are you you know burning that out and making sure that those are solid and in good places, but you're allowing yourself the ability to then start pumping that power directly into your event champions. So yeah, go do that stuff. Uh, you know, budget though. You don't have to spend. You've got one hundred sixty thousand. Uh, like I want to say, you get what fifty thousand is a hundred gold chests. So, you know, maybe drop fifty thousand now, uh, and then, you know, and then shoot to try to get to two hundred thousand, and then drop down to and then burn another fifty. And you know, if you've been if you burn fifty thousand occasionally, that's a good way to budget uh, and blend both saving up for a core, but also uh, getting you power you needed. Like I saved, I just recently, I posted on Twitter that I, I bought my second core. Um, but I was, I had, it, it took me longer because I spent like a hundred thousand on chest on gold chests bef uh, before the last event started. So, you know, I, I budgeted and I continue to budget in that way. Uh, let's see. I got a bunch of blacksmith contracts. Who is good to invest in among the evergreens and free and Frida? No, you don't ever want to use well i mean if you have already don't feel bad but you don't want to use blacksmith contracts on core and evergreen champions specifically for what i was just talking about uh uh with nefarious's question uh you want to you're going to get your item levels out and your and your increased power out of those just regular silver and gold chests that you buy for core and evergreen champions you want to take blacksmithing contracts and you want to use those on your event champions only uh, that's how you want to power up your event champion. So uh, let me hop over to the other account. Again, uh, I'm using this. Oh, no, that's the bounty contract. I'm using this to show that I have, you know, I can see my item levels on champions and I can look at, well, I can look for the ones that I'm regularly using and put item levels into them first. So like when I was looking uh, to do get up to 80, I put them into people like, Omen and Regis first because I use them regularly, um, so that mattered. And Grama, and then I waited until uh, until the end to f to get people like Binwin up to eighty because I don't use him as much uh, in my pushing formations. And Ishi, right? So you can make those kinds of decisions. I like to spread them all out uh, fairly equally, but again, that doesn't doesn't have to be that way. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Is Black Viper worth trying to stack up? Um, if she is the DPS that you want to use, just thematically, go for it. Uh, however, she, her stacking system is not as powerful as Zorbu's, so she's okay when she's fully stacked, but um, she's not necessarily at the high level of DPS currently. Uh, is there a convenient way to review your item levels on everyone? Uh, I just kind of showed you. Uh, keep, always keep like a blacksmithing contract in your inventory, at least one, and you'll always be able to open up this screen. Uh, I didn't consume that blacksmithing contract because I didn't click on anyone. I could even still click on someone, but as long as I don't push level up, I can close that out and I didn't consume that contract. Um... Doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Trying to see, some of these are general questions I think chat probably handled because they're not things that I can really answer. A lot of times if you're if you're asking questions about like, how do I beat this level or what do I do for this? What's my best option for this specific patron? Discord's gonna help you out uh, or ask on Reddit um, because there's gonna need to be lots of follow-up questions that happen and unfortunately, I can't necessarily do those follow-up questions on stream in, a, in any kind of reasonable manner. Um, so definitely hit them up. There are tons of people in the community, and, and I'm in, around there answering questions sometimes. Uh, but there are lots of people who can help you out with that regard. Uh, are gem drops within a range, and does that range increase, or is it constant no matter how high you go? Uh, so this is in reference to like the gems that you get off a boss. Uh, they don't change the deeper you go. That would be kind of crazy and balanced. Um, for those of us that can push super far. Uh, so it's it's just every every boss has a chance to drop within a certain range. Uh, and if you get that gem uh, blessing, that, you know, the amount that comes is, is a little more. Um, but yeah, that's it. So it doesn't matter how far you go. Like, you could, I could run, I run my, uh, you can see right here, I run my Modron automation to 330 and reset. But in terms of the gems I'm getting, like just the flat amount of gems I'm getting, I could run to 30 and get the same... This, I would average the same gems. Uh, I run further because Shandy. Shandy requires uh, like a runway. She has to get up to speed. She needs 30 seconds of of not uh, of the party not being hit to really kick her speed effect in. So the further I go, uh, where I can instantly kill, uh, the more efficient I am using Shandy. But again, that's where I can instantly kill. Uh, when did newsletter chests come out? On Fridays. So every Friday that email uh, pumps out in the afternoon. Uh, I know I got them for, I believe I got them for my accounts yesterday, both accounts, or all three accounts, or just, I don't know how many I get now. I have too many accounts. Um, but yeah, that's Fridays. If you didn't see it, check your spam folder. Uh, if, if it's not there, then submit a ticket. Stokey no longer double dips with her ultimate, or with her uh, key explosion, right? Uh, that should be fixed. From all the crying I saw about Stokey in Discord, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's fixed. How do I get my loot levels up? Uh, so loot levels are basically uh, your item levels. Um, and that comes from just opening more chests, more, you know, as many chests as you can. So spending your gems when early on, spending them on uh, on chests, like then I'm, I'm assuming this is in regards to unlocking Mert because he needs 2,000 loot levels average or total. Um, but also you can burn those blacksmithing contracts. Just remember, blacksmithing contracts should be focused on event champions. I have 30 silver chests I've saved. Is there any advantage, an advantage to opening them at time gate? I wouldn't open them in a time gate. Uh, if you want to hold them up and you, if you don't need to open them now for gear, I would hold them to uh, an event. That's what I do. That's why I have uh, 900 saved up at the moment. Uh, I open them in events. Because remember that first run in an event, uh, like a time gate, that first run in an event, you tend to wall out because you don't have enough gold and opening silver chests gives you gold. Sure, time gates work the same way, but again, time gates give you a quarter of the return on your favor gains that, uh, that events do. So I tend to focus that push on events, but you can do it on the time gate if you want. Are there ways to get familiars besides gems or money? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you don't want to spend gems on them and you don't want to spend money on them, uh, you can earn influence and uh, and patron currency uh, for these patrons and get each one has one familiar currently that you can buy. Uh, it's pretty far down there, but you can do it. Uh, end game talk. All champs, all epics. Ooh. In game talk. We got like two minutes. Let's see if I can do this. All champs, all epics, mostly gilded. Approximately what favor levels do you recommend for each campaign to be able to beat all the patron variants as they are right now? I mean, this is these are my favor levels. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know that I'm fully complete. I'm definitely not fully completed on all the variants. The newer ones I haven't done, but I have finished the rest. Torms is rough. Uh, Torms is a little rough. So having, a, you know, treating that long term and building up favor what you kind of want to do. Last question is an easy one. What is a champion? All of these characters that we're using uh, are champions. 
uh, and you unlock champions and events or time gates or if they're evergreen champions you you get them from the campaign like you get hitch by uh, clicking here and signing up on the newsletter uh, others you unlock just by playing through campaigns and that's gonna be it everyone thank you I appreciate uh, everyone hanging around I know we started a little late today uh, because of uh, internet issues dang you internet um, but we are going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you to uh, Jay for being patient and hanging around. Thank you to all of you. Uh, we will be back uh, next week again uh, here on the CNE channel uh, for all of their uh, wonderful streams. Uh, my streams are on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, and then uh, I do, again, stream on my channel Tuesdays at noon Pacific for an hour. And then we raid CNE for their Bardic Inspiration. Uh, and then Thursdays starting... Uh, I want to say 10 Pacific? Yeah, 10 a.m. Pacific. Uh, we do the Mars War Challenge uh, stream where I play on that uh, that new new player account. So if you're a new player and you want to uh, watch uh, an experienced player play through a new player account uh, and ask questions, hit me up then for like three hours. And then we raid the CNE stream for their developer Q&A. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye.